Hi, this is Jim Wright, and in this lesson, we'll create and test a 4-axis post processor using the Post Builder product. Our lesson plan is to create a 4-axis post processor and then modify the key settings for 4-axis output, not only inside of Post Builder, but also inside of NX. When you're creating a multi-axis post processor, you need to understand some of the key settings for that 4-axis machine tool and also, of course, for the post processor itself. You should understand the axis of rotation. In other words, what linear axis does this particular rotary axis rotate about? You should also understand the rotation limits. Can it go from 0 to 360? Can it go from minus 3,600 to positive 3,600? Some rotaries have limits, some don't. Also, you need to understand the axis name, direction of rotation for that axis, and is it a contouring or positioning axis? To help clarify some of those settings, I'd like you to refer to the diagram Notice that in the alphabet, X, Y, and Z follow themselves alphabetically. So do A, B, and C. And so the designers of machine tools have logically linked those two together. Typically speaking, if you have an A axis, it rotates around the linear X. If you have a rotary B axis, it typically rotates around the linear Y axis. The C-axis is not used a great deal on multi-axis machines, but it is used quite extensively on mill turn machines. And that's where the Z-axis becoming the rotary C-axis comes into play. Further referring to the diagram, if you look at the B+, that indicates the direction of positive rotation for the rotary axis. Now a clarification here is necessary because when you're an NC programmer you don't think about the axis moving you think about how the tool moves in relationship to the part but when you're building a post processor you're not thinking about that you're thinking about how the axis actually rotates so it's actually inverse or reversed of what you would do as an NC programmer so keep that in mind as you're building your post processor you can also see positive direction for the A and the C axis So in our first scenario, we're going to create a new 4-axis post processor. We'll modify the NC program for cylinder clearance. That's something that you'll need to do as an NC programmer, so I want to show you how to do that. And then finally, we'll test the output to see if the rotary is moving in the direction that we need it to. Let's get started. This time, instead of starting with the building of the post, I thought I would start with explaining some of the things that we have in our NC program. First, I have several operations. One is a face milling operation at the B0. And Why do I call that B0? Well, if you look at the linear axes, the coordinate system marker, you can see that we have Z facing front. We have the Y axis going up the vertical axis of the tombstone and because X relates to A and Y relates to B that means that this must be at B0. Then we have another operation at the B270 side, another operation at the B90 side, and then back to B0 for some spot drilling and drilling operations. When you're doing NC programming in multi-axis mode, you need to make sure that the tool clears the workpiece as the rotary axis is rotating. To do that in Cam Express and NX, we have in the geometry view something that will help you quite a bit. I'll switch to the geometry view. I'll double click on MCS Mill. Notice that right now the clearance option is set to a plane. I can change that to define a cylinder. 
What the cylinder does is it defines a clearance zone within which the tool must retract from before it can do any rotary action. So I'll choose cylinder. The center point of the cylinder will be the center point of X, Y, and Z. So I'll simply choose 0, 0, 0 for the center point of the cylinder. For the vector of the cylinder, I can choose any object which points up in the positive Y direction. And for the radius of the cylinder, I'll choose a value of 18 inches. This is an inch part. display that. That cylinder clears the workpiece entirely. I'm satisfied with that. So I'll choose OK. And now regenerate all the operations. In Post Builder, File, New, Inches Post, Mill, I'll use the 4-axis with rotary table option because that matches my setup. For Controller, I'll choose the Finuc 30i. Four axis one for the post name. The key parameters for fourth axis are listed under the fourth axis item. First, define the plane of rotation. In other words, what plane does the rotary axis rotate in? Another way to look at that is to think about the axis that it rotates about and it's always going to be the one that's missing from this plane of rotation. In this case, we have the B axis rotating about Y, so the plane of rotation is correct. The word leader is also correct, but we could change that if necessary. The rotary motion resolution indicates whether this table can do contouring or positioning. If a value is put in of 1 or 5 or 10 degrees, then it becomes by default a positioning table. However, leaving it with a fine rotary motion resolution like 0 .001 means that it is capable of doing contouring motion. Axis rotation in our case is normal. The axis limits are from 0 to 360 degrees. You can also specify a machine 0 to the fourth axis center if you need to. Axis direction is typically on newer machines, magnitude determines direction. In other words, the machine tool will determine how to get to the new position based on the shortest direction. However, some older controls require a positive or negative sign to indicate to the machine which way to rotate the axis. Display machine tool can be helpful to determine if you've created the fourth axis nomenclature properly. Let's save this post and test it. Return to Cam Express, Post Process, Browse for a post. For the B0 operations, the rotary axis moves to B0.
for the B270, the rotary axis moves to B270. B90, B90. It looks like our post is working the way we need it to. However, if I needed to do contouring positioning with this post, I do not have any contouring operations in here, so I would need to add those to test that type of machining capability. In this post builder lesson, you learned how to create a four axis post processor. We then modified key settings for four axis output, not only in the post builder itself, but also in NX or Cam Express. Remember, on rotary axis movement for post processors, the alphabet is key. X is to A, Y is to B, and Z or Z is to C. You can use the right hand rule to determine the plus direction of rotation. That is, take your right hand, point it in the positive direction of the linear axis, and your curled fingers indicate the direction of positive rotation for the axis itself. Also, remember that axis rotation is backwards from the NC programmer view. As an NC programmer, you're looking at tool motion. As a post-processor builder, you're looking at the actual rotation of the axis. Thanks for viewing. In our next lesson, we'll move on to create a 5-axis post-processor.